Good Monday morning of the 25th week of the year of Ordinary Time. This whole week and next week are Proverbs and uh, Wisdom Literature and says a, a lot of sayings. And so I guess they're, they're a collection or a compilation of sayings as opposed to any coherent doctrinal development. I don't know. I don't have any authority. I looked up a commentary on it. But to try to get make some sense of it, so I wouldn't be wasting your time. But I I like some of it. In fact, I find myself in my old age doing a lot of this kind of stuff because it's a summary of ideas, in some ways that capture a broader wisdom. Okay, and I think you get it with age. Whoever wrote Proverbs, whoever is getting it, this guy been around. Okay, and it always has to do with the individual flourishing within a flourishing society called his neighbors. It's a key idea that it's the people who constitute your social, uh, your social arena, your family, right up to your, right, including your marriage, your children, your family, extended family, your neighbors, etc. And it's a wisdom of flourishing, not just survival, though survival's at stake. It's a wisdom. It's a wisdom. I think of it as a wisdom of flourishing. How to flourish in society, as opposed, as opposed to just surviving. Okay an isolation, I don't know, self-interest as opposed to communal effort to enrich the society. Aristotle said, uh, said that to be virtuous, you also needed to live in a virtuous society. What I try to do, I'll tell you the truth, I'll show you some stuff. This week, this week and next and the following week, in my ethics, was it my ethics? I don't know what I'm doing half the time. So yeah, in my ethics class, <laughs> I didn't think I'm kidding. I'm showing the movie Godfather 1 and 2. First of all, great films. And besides, <laughs> I take ethnic pride in them. In the, not the criminality of it, but in the artistry of the presentation and the culture that I, I experienced that. Not the criminal culture, but the, the familial culture, the language, the give and take. I get a kick out of it. And I share it with my kids in class, okay? But one of the things you see in that, that choices matter. And then really you can say that the whole Godfather theory, series is the rise and fall of Michael. And he makes choices. And in the choices that he makes, he plummets himself into an untenable world. He has a choice between a virtuous life and a life of crime, a life, a vicious life, really. Not vice, uh, not, not virtue, but vice. And he chooses for good reasons, to protect his family, he chooses to enter what I call Hobbesian world, the world of Thomas Hobbes, where everyone is enemy with everyone else, in which you live together in contractual form in order to protect your self-interest. And in that world, you will eventually lose. And he loses. That's why in Godfather Three, Michael dies alone. Even his dog walks away. He has nothing left. But he chose it. He chose... Against Aristotle's view of virtue, okay, which are virtues that enhance one's self and one's relationship to everyone else, friendship, the primary virtue, the virtue of friendship. He's the, instead, Michael chooses enmity, struggle, and he loses. He conquers at one end, but he loses at the back end. The end that really counts, he dies alone, you see. And so here you get these sayings, okay? This guy's been around. By the time Proverbs, I don't know this, but whenever I see wisdom literature, I know this is very late in the Hebraic tradition. That is, this is roughly the time of Christ because the whole Mediterranean world was, was consumed by wisdom, the Greek, the Hellenic wisdom. It was, in the, it was in the air they breathed, and you could see that, you can hear it. And they temper pseudo-wisdom with real wisdom, and ultimately real wisdom comes from God. That's a key thing. Okay, see, the love and worship of God is the foundation of wisdom itself, okay? These guys are all trying to understand what is life about. That's a bottom line. They've seen it all and tasted it all. Their institutions had collapsed all around them. They were looking for life's meaning and they knew it was a, some, they searched, they're in search of wisdom. Seems to me so are we. But just for one, this is one that I, I share with my kids in class my way. It said, plot no evil against your neighbor, against one who lives at peace with you. Quarrel not with a man without cause, <clears throat> with one who has done you no harm. 
This is what I say to my kids. Never turn a friend into an enemy. Never turn a, a potential friend into an enemy. Never turn an acquaintance into an enemy. Never turn your neighbor into an enemy. Why? Not because it's unchristian or a, it's because it's unwise. It's unwise in a very, very streetwise sense. It's really true. I tell my kids this all the time. It's not that it is ignoble, it's that it is prudentially stupid. And the reason is, when you turn a friend into an enemy, you have unleashed a whirlwind. You don't know what's out there. It's easier and wiser to be kind. The first one is refuse no one good on uh, no refuse no one the good in which he has a claim when it is your power to do it from say say not to your neighbor go and come back again later I'll give it to you later when you can give it to him now take care of your own take care of your family take care of your friend, your neighbor don't take give see if you don't who you will isolate yourself I I don't know how else to say it. Don't ever turn a friend, a neighbor, into an enemy, a person indebted. I think that's right. I told it, I, if you, I must have told you this already. I use it so many times, I got to forget, but I call it the Frankie Coppola syndrome. Frankie Coppola was a kid I grew up with. He is arguably one of the best friends I ever had in my life, by far. It was back when we were in little, I don't remember when it started. He died three or four years ago of cancer. Mm -hmm. He was my brother's brother-in-law, but Frankie was a kid we grew up with. And Frank, in my view, was as a good a guy as they came, and he was as strong as an ox. He was the guy who could take, he was the guy to be taken seriously, okay? Frankie was not somebody you would mess with, okay? <laughs> One day in high school, some guy did a job on me because I was trying to, Take his, I didn't know he was dating this girl. I thought she was, I had taken her out. And I guess I didn't know I got dumped. I tell my kids in class that. Anyway, what happened was I kept calling her up. And one day a friend of mine came up to me and said, do you know this girl? And I said, yeah, I do. I want to go out with her. He said, well, her boyfriend's going to do a job on you. Well, sure enough, he showed up and a couple of guys grabbed me. And they, they let me know they were going to beat the Christmas tree out of me. Okay, well, whatever. And they were fully capable of beating me. I was a wuss. Well, what they didn't know, I was not their enemy. I was just somebody mistakenly looking for a date. What they didn't know was that going after me, they were going to go after Frankie Coppola. So when I got home that day, wuss that I am, I said, Frankie, this guy's going to do a job on me. We were just kids. I was 14 years old, 15 years old. Two days later, this guy shows up. He wants to take me for, give me a ride home in his car and all that. He was nice to me. I mean that literally. Why? As I asked Frankie years later, what happened, Frankie? He said, I want to talk to him. I would have loved to have been in that conversation. If you want to see an example of artistically presented, go to see Godfather 2 and watch the young uh, Don, Don Vito, played by Robert, Duvall, uh, Robert, uh, Robert De Niro. Watch him confront the bully landlord and you get the picture. Don't make an enemy out of a friend or even an acquaintance because it could be a Frankie Coppola back there. There may not be, but there could be. This isn't religious wisdom. This is street wisdom. Keep your nose clean. Don't pick a fight. Don't turn a friend into an enemy. Yeah, be generous. Be a good neighbor.